The thing you got to remember, good leaders focus on what you do and how you do it. The great ones, they remind us why. You know, as hard as you've been working to engage your people, there's something missing. That's culture. And each of you owns this culture. 95% of job candidates today say that culture is more important than compensation. Now know that potential new hires are going to check you out on career sites, on social media. There's a couple of things they want to know. First off, who do you say you are? That's your brand. Second, do you live up to what you say? That's your culture. To really understand a problem, you need the data. And Adrian's work is based on survey results of over 800,000 people in the workplace and what makes them feel engaged and what makes them excited to come to work every day. He came to this conference and really he wowed us. I remember when, uh, when this section on engagement was over and I, I actually was personally responsible for leading that half day of the two day conference. I went and sat down by one of the founders of the company and he said, uh, in 40 years of this conference, that, that half day was the most powerful we've ever had. How many people have had a lousy boss in your career? He or she's not here with us today, right? Absolutely okay. correct. Okay, They're good, not good. Here. All right. <laughs> All right, so Lisa, so tell us uh, what this person was like. How did they treat you? It's really bad. Yeah? Demeaning you, oh talking my gosh. down to you, just like crap. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you trust this manager? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You need a Karen. Let's give her, uh, let's give her a round of applause. One. Okay, now let's, let's do the positive here. Who's had a great boss? Positive and yeah. reinforcing oh, that's and awesome. everything else. If this great boss asked you to take on an extra assignment or take on an extra shift, would you have done it for him? Definitely. Definitely. As you're driving into your office, Max, every, every day, do you just sort of throw your fist in the air and say, yes, I get to go to work today? Do you do that? Some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Integrity is one of your core values. Nicely done. <laughs> So how can you become more innovative and agile when the world is changing so fast? Let me tell you about Mitch Schneider. When I met him, he'd just become CEO of 80-year-old Bell Helicopter. Now, they were known as being really safe and reliable, but not particularly innovative. So he renames his engineering group the Innovations Team, and he brought in some graphic artists who'd worked in video game design and sci-fi movies. You know, these guys wore Birkenstocks and T-shirts and they came into the button-down world of engineering, and Mitch said, it did not go well. <laughs> the designers would say, what if we made the wings look like this? And the engineers would say, nope, won't fly. <laughs> Mitch said, every idea just got shot down. So Mitch created some ground rules. First, anyone can make suggestions without fear of looking stupid. Second, we will challenge the idea, but not the person. And third, debates are an opportunity to find the best idea, not to ram home your points. Now, are those genius? No. What's genius is that he actually did it. He created a safe environment for respectful debate. And boy, the debate started. He says, I'm sitting in a meeting one day, and in the corner, one of the engineers, I hear this little whisper to a crazy idea. The engineer says, you know what? That might just work. He said that was a tipping point. Now this is the first aircraft out of that innovations team. It's pretty cool, right? On my last visit to Bell Helicopter, one of the engineers told me, he said, today we are like a pack searching for solutions rather than a herd searching for cover. Employees need to have their leaders create these psychologically safe environments. I've been asked to speak to a group of leaders. To get through, I have to understand their worlds. I'll do multiple calls beforehand with a client, or interview key executives if possible. I'll even spend time in their locations. I have to understand the stresses they feel. 